Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some part of Exile discussion. Today, I wanted to tackle the question of burnout, uh, which is something that's come up a lot recently, since there were a couple of very popular streamers that decided that uh, they wanted to move on from the Path of Exile scene. Uh, so Somyad and Chisto, and I apologise if I pronounced those uh, names wrongly, uh, were two very well-known, very highly respected streamers that decided to call it quits about a, uh, about a week and a so ago. I was going to put out a video really quickly at the time. Uh, then there was an excellent video that was put out by the streamer Zizarin, uh, which mentions a lot of the things I'm going to mention and actually elaborates on them uh, a lot more than I would have. Uh, instead, I want to uh, focus on a slightly different position that I find myself in and my tips as to how I personally avoid getting burnt out. So uh, these two players were among the most respected uh, streamers in Path of Exile. Uh, Chisto was probably the number one Russian language streamer, uh, and Somyad was certainly one of the more popular uh, English language streamers. But ultimately, both decided about the same time that they were just through with the game. They didn't like uh, the way the direction was going, they didn't like the uh, nature of streaming as an industry, and they decided it was time to move on. Firstly, I want to say I wish them all the best in whatever they end up doing, uh, whether either of them decide to continue streaming something else, uh, and if they do, highly recommend checking them out. Uh, on the flip side, if they decide to re-enter the 9 to 5 workforce, then I hope they do really well in whatever they're doing. Um, and you know, I hope they also take some of the skills that they've learnt from their period in streaming uh, and take that into, you know, into whatever job they're doing uh, and use it to do well. But ultimately, uh, I think that there's a couple of things that cause people to burn out. And the most difficult thing from a game design perspective, so from GGG's perspective, is that actually players want different things and players enjoy different things. Now, I'm going to talk for myself here, and I think that a lot of people are going to disagree with the things that I find fun in Path of Exile. I'm the sort of player that when I started, the reason I got hooked on this game was that I just created my own character from scratch. Uh, you know, looked at the looked at the passive tree and I was like, oh, shadow, that sounds cool. All right, I'll be a shadow. And then I'm like, oh, what do I want to do uh, here? Oh, let's go with this physical and chaos damage. That sounds cool. I've got this Viper Strike skill. That looks awesome. I'll take this physical and chaos damage. Oh, these are life nodes. Uh, I'm not a tank. I'm a DPS. I'm going to skip those. And so I wound up making this absolutely abhorrently terrible character. Uh, and... I eventually hit a brick wall where I really couldn't progress at about character level 53 or so. Uh, now, the game was in a different format back then. You didn't have 10 acts, you had 3 acts, and you played them 3 times through. Uh, but I got to what you would say is reasonably, uh, reasonably comparable to current Act 8, and I just couldn't progress any further. Whenever I tried to grind character levels, I would die repeatedly. Uh, whenever I tried to, and you know, I would die and I would lose XP from dying more quickly than I would gain XP from killing monsters. Uh, whenever I tried to kill new bosses, I would hit Merciless Oak, uh, so Oak as in the bandit in Act 2. Uh, he had a degree of um, regeneration that I just couldn't beat. Uh, now, this may seem completely horrible as a game experience to a lot of players, but I found I was having a lot of fun just getting my ass kicked and basically just getting told, all right, you need to learn more about this game in order to progress. And so eventually I was like, all right, I'm going to look up a beginner guide. And at the time, I think one of the most popular beginner guides was from the streamer and content creator ZD. Uh, so I found one of those. I was like, oh, now I'm playing through on a new character and gee, everything feels so much easier. Now, I'm making massive progress, but what got me hooked on the game was failure after failure after failure, uh, and the idea that I needed to improve to overcome obstacles. So that's what I tend to find fun. On the flip side, you get a lot of players who have a very different approach. They don't really like failing very much. Uh, what they find fun is instead uh, just dominating content. So it's the progress of improvement from going from... I am struggling with tier 16 maps to uh, to then getting to a point where I completely dominate tier 16 maps. Uh, I am killing everything that I touch with one shot. You know, even um, even big map bosses like the Hydra, uh, you know, I can kill in three hits. Uh, 
it doesn't even last two seconds against me. I can go into the field and I can feel confident that I'm going to win the field the first time I try it, no matter what mods are on it, uh, as long as I don't make any stupid massive mistakes like standing in an Atsuri empowered storm call or something like that. So that is what some people find fun. It's basically getting to the point, it's that character progression to the point where you dominate the content. For me, it's having content left that you can fail over and over again. And you'll notice that these two desires ultimately become counterposed because to please me, you have to have content that crushes everyone in the game. Whereas to please the people that just want the improvement side of things, uh, you actually have to have no content that they can't improve enough reasonably to dominate. And so what's happened over the last several leagues in Path of Exile is that there's been a pendulum swinging where at times there's been new content added that's been extremely difficult. And I think the best example of this is Delve. So Delve comes along and adds a tremendous amount of additional challenge at the top end. On the flip side, you have other content that was added, like uh, the Abyss League. Now, Abyss is was where they introduced people that aren't familiar with Path of Exile's history. Uh, this was Expansion 3.1. This was the introduction of Shaper and Elder influence on items. And so when Abyss League hits, the pendulum swings the other way. Character power goes up, 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 up into the stratosphere. And for me, as a player that was just starting to become reasonably good at the game when Abyss came out, uh, it, went, it meant that where I was sort of just able to beat the Guardians of the Shaper before Abyss came and gave us all of this character power creep, after Abyss, I was just smashing them. You know, I, I felt like they were no challenge whatsoever. Um, and then I was looking around and saying, you know what, I'm really running out of things to do in the game. I'm running out of encounters that I can fail. Fortunately, 3.2, just a league later, brought the Uber Elder encounter, which was miles beyond my play skill at the time, and so that sort of kept me happy for the time. Um, and then you had 3.4 bringing Delve and giving a massive additional amount of challenge that's available. And then comes Legion, and it's interesting to see the community uh, attitude to Legion. Now, I didn't like Legion as a league because I found that it was adding so much power to characters by virtue of just making so much extra loot drop from these legions that were really easy to kill in low tier maps, uh, that I found it was a really disappointing league. Whereas other players really liked it because they're like, oh, there's all these things I've never been able to achieve in this game that now because of legion I can. And so you can see how there's these two different um, attitudes as to what is fun that are fundamentally counterposed in Path of Exile. And ultimately, I think that a couple of the changes GGG have made in the last two to three months, uh, and most significantly the gutting of Harvest, uh, have really disappointed the group of players that want to see their character's power increase considerably, uh, whilst at the same time have been perfect for someone like me that felt like Harvest was just this easy button that ruined, that, you know, ruined the challenge from a lot of the game, and that basically took away my ability to to access content that I could fail. Uh, so that's where I think people who are in that opposite group to me have been burning out lately because they've found that the game has ma has sort of moved in a direction that they don't like. That said, uh, there's also been a couple of other changes that have been made as well, like for instance, the uh, decision to nerf, uh, I'm looking in the wrong section of the Atlas here, as Veldo's Rest is where I'm looking for, uh, the decision to nerf Diplomatic Escort, which was a way in w by which uh, players could, in low-tier maps, could farm an extraordinary amount of currency. Uh, now, Diplomatic Escort is still good. Uh, it's still something that I definitely would recommend everyone takes, uh, but it's not nearly as powerful as it used to be. And so a lot of players feel like there is too much to do when they get to endgame. It takes too long to get to a point that their atlas feels complete. Whereas for me, I think, oh, great, there's, there's a lot to do at Endgame, and there's a lot of time in which I'm going to be slowly improving my character. So that's the reason that I've not been feeling particularly burnt out lately. Uh, however, there have been times that I have felt burnt out, and a good example of that was Legion, when the pendulum swung the other way. 
and it was away from the things that I found funny in the game. Uh, also, the same happened during the Harvest League, when again, the game swung away from the things I find fun. And there's two things that I find are really useful to, uh, to keep interested in the game. There's actually three, so let's just talk about the one that I can't really do as a content creator. The third one, uh, sorry, that, so that first one is just simply taking a complete break from the game. Just saying, you know what, the game isn't fun for me at the moment, I'm going to walk away, I'm going to skip an entire league, and then I'm going to come back when the game feels like it will be fun again. And this is actually what I recommend to the vast majority of my viewers. Like, you know, if you don't have a YouTube channel that you're trying to build, if you don't have a Twitch stream you're trying to build, then this is what you should do. Just say, you know what, I'm not feeling this league. I am going to sit, away, sit out. Uh, I've been meaning to play game XYZ. I've been meaning to go and hike this mountain trail. I've been meaning to do something else. Go and do that instead. Come back. The game will still be there when you're back. And the fact that you've missed out on a couple of uh, time-limited cosmetics doesn't matter. There are so many cosmetics that in this game that missing out on one of them is not the end of the world. You know, like, I, I got the Ritualist Hideout. I have never used it. I don't think I ever will use it because I like my Celestial Nebula Hideout uh, with the Toucan in it too much. Uh, so for that reason, the fact that I've got it doesn't really affect me at all, uh, and it's lo and it would be no different to if I didn't have it. Likewise for a lot of the uh, armor sets and the like that come from League Challenge Awards. Yeah, they're kind of cool if you can get them, but only play f uh, only play the league if the league is going to be fun, and then treat the um, you know treat the cosmetic sets in question as a bit of a bonus. So that's the first option that you've got, is just to walk away from the game for a while. Uh, the second option is to maintain separate hobbies. Uh, and this is something that I do, you know, like I'm, uh, people who stalk me on Reddit or something like that would know that I'm a huge karaoke fanatic. You know, tonight I'm not going to be playing Path of Exile. Tonight I'm going to be going to a karaoke bar and singing and making a fool of myself. And that's going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun. Then, on other nights of the week, uh, I'm going to come back and play Path of Exile and be back on streaming. Now, I'm not suggesting karaoke is right for everyone. Uh, you know, for some of you, it will be maybe playing a first-person shooter, game type that I'm absolutely terrible at. Uh, you know, it, that might be exactly what's perfect for you. Or it might be catching up the latest, um, you know, the latest um, movie, uh, movie on Netflix that you haven't seen yet, or the latest TV series, or whatever it is. You know, you know yourself better than I do. Uh, so maintaining hobbies outside Path of Exile is important. Now the third thing is honestly assessing what you find fun about the game. And for me, that is having content you can fail and trying to prevail against it. And then go, okay, well, what's the right build for me to play? In my case, it's actually, it's not necessarily to play the most powerful build in the game. Like, I think right now you would say that the most powerful builds that are going around in the Ultimatum League are the Hateforge-based Infinite Vile attack builds, uh, Vile Ground Slam in particular. I think this is probably the most strong build that's currently around in the game right now. And I'm not playing it. I have no interest in playing it because it doesn't gel with what I find fun in the game. Instead, I'm still fighting to try to make the um, ele Elementalist Reap build work. Uh, well, it's more a Corrupting Fever build now. Uh, I'm still fighting to make that work. Uh, I'm not really succeeding. It's a pretty mediocre build. It's serviceable. Uh, it's good enough to kill, you know, to kill Shaper, to kill Elder. Uh, probably be good enough to kill Uber Elder if I play well, although I haven't yet tried. Uh, it's been good enough to kill Cirrus. I'd be good enough to kill a Maven. All these sorts of things. But it might not be able to beat all at depth 3,000. You know, it's not going to be the strongest build in the game. It's not going to be doing 30, tier 19, 100% delirious maps in an hour. Uh, but what it can do, and what it can do and can do well, is remain fun to play because it's not as strong. And that's been one of my tricks. But ultimately, uh, that's not going to work for everyone. If what makes the game fun for you is dominating content, is the feeling of just smashing your way through enemies, uh, you know, carving a path, one-shotting Uber at Ziri, uh, every phase of Uber at Ziri. Now, place uh, in that case, you want to play a build that suits your play style, uh, and so that's something that I think you should give a real thought to. What do you find fun about the game, uh, and how can you choose your builds to 
align with your sense of fun. And for me, it is definitely at the moment, it's been trying to make some zany things, some off meta things work, uh, trying to get them to the point that they're good enough to do all the content rather than being concerned with making the, playing the absolute best thing around. So anyways, uh, that's all I've got. I think this will be one of those topics that uh, people will have a lot of divergent opinions on. Uh, I've certainly seen excellent videos on this topic from a bunch of different players that come from very different backgrounds. So, um, you know, Zizarin as one of the most professional streamers out there, you know, someone that's uh, one of the very best players of the game full stop, uh, and also someone who is an extraordinarily good entertainer uh, as well, and that's why he's been so successful in streaming. And he put out a video that was fantastic. Uh, then Grimro put out a video with a different take uh, that was from a medium size content creator. And then this is Badger put out a, a different video, which was also from a medium sized content creator that was also really informative. So I found it being really interesting to watch everything. Um, but ultimately, I am curious to see if you are someone that is feeling burnt out on the game, why haven't you taken a break? Uh, is there something that's making you feel compelled to play right now uh, that you don't think that it would uh, be the right choice for you to wait three months uh, until the 3.15 release and see if the things that you don't like about the game are changed by then? Uh, or is there something else? Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any comments or questions, far away below. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a good one. And may your Valorps have interesting results.